Okay, everybody, welcome to Intro to Cinema 4D. Uh, for those of you that subscribe to my channel, I apologize for all the intro videos that are going to be coming soon, starting a new class session. Um, I will be posting some advanced stuff in the coming weeks, uh, so you can look for that. Okay, so for our class today, uh, we worked with building the snowman, so I kind of wanted to review for you a little bit about what we talked about. Um, so I'm going to open up a new window, Command N, and uh, give you the basic kind of laydown of the software. So Cinema 4D, this is the basic layout uh, that you'll get when you open it up. Uh, what you'll see in the middle is a, called a viewport. This is where we can interact with objects. If we go ahead and put something in there, like a sphere, click and hold that down and drag over to the sphere, uh, you can see it uh, puts a three-dimensional model in here. This is what's called a primitive model. Um, we can use it essentially like a building block to make other things out of. Um, you'll notice that's highlighted with that yellow ring around it. Um, uh, for now, uh, you know, we're going to work with just primitives and we'll talk a little bit more about making them editable or not as we go further on. Um, for now though, uh, you know, we can change the scale by grabbing this little slider bar right here, this little tiny yellow square in the middle. If you grab that thing, you can enlarge it, you can shrink it down, you can kind of scale it throughout. Uh, if you don't like that, you can always Command-Z, undo. Um, right now, uh, it appears in the viewport. We also see an icon with the title sphere in the objects manager. And then finally, below hand, we have the attributes manager, which shows the different elements of the actual model. So we have a radius of 100 centimeters, 24 segments, which you can see if you turn the display to shading with lines on. We have 24 segments that wrap around. Um, and then uh, also the different types of, uh, of uh, polyhedrons that it's made up of standard, uh, you know, it could be octahedron, gives you a different sort of pattern, etc. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later. But <clears throat> attributes manager, objects manager, viewport are some things that we're going to be working with. Uh, so today we're going to kind of go through quickly and build something, and then we're going to break things down a little bit later on to get more specific. So um, right now we have a sphere. Notice that it's sitting kind of in the middle. It's sitting at zero position down here, position size rotation you see uh, down in this panel, zero, 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 which is good. That's the center of the object is at zero, zero, zero. Uh, but it looks like it's like in the middle of the floor, right? So I want to raise that up a little bit. Now I can either grab this little handlebar and raise it up, um, or if because I know that it's 100 centimeters radius, if I uh, grab the Y coordinate here and type in 100, uh, hit enter, it's going to raise it up to uh, essentially the bottom touching that hypothetical floor. Um, notice here that we have Y, we have the X axis, and the Z axis. Those are different uh, quadrants that we're going to be you know, using throughout. And um, as you scroll over them, they, they become highlighted. If you click on it, while it's highlighted, you can move that in that specific direction. If you click outside of those arrows and grab and drag, you can move it, you know, around arbitrarily. Uh, I recommend using the arrows there so you know which direction you're moving in. Okay, so the other thing about navigation is that up here in the top right, we have our viewport navigating tools, and this allows us to essentially like move the camera around or we move around the object stays put. So the first one is the move tool. If you, you have to click and hold it down and then you can move your cursor or your mouse around and you can you know, move it around in the scene. So we're moving to the left, we're moving to the right to get oriented in that way. You have the zoom tool, which you click and hold down. Again, you can zoom in and out of your model. Uh, the rotate tool, which allows you to rotate around. And then finally, um, this viewport uh, button, which if you click it, opens up four different uh, viewports. We have the perspective, top, the right side, and the front. And uh, you know that becomes really helpful as, as you're working with models to see different sides from uh, one point of view. Um, also, if you want to you know, get a larger image of the top view, you click on top in that button and then you can see a larger view. If you click out of it again and click back to perspective, it will get back to that perspective uh, viewpoint. Okay, uh, I just gotta pause for a second. It's frustrating. So I'm going to pause. Okay, sorry about that. Someone at the door 
needed to talk to quickly. Um, okay, so um, back to where we were. Um, we, uh, you know, you can navigate throughout your viewport this way. Um, the other thing that we have are so similar sort of looking tools up in the top left here. Right now, this is on the move tool, which shows you the arrows. Okay, that's pretty obvious. Scale tool, which right now, because it's a primitive object, if you try to grab and scale, it's going to do that uniformly instead of um, you know squashing it down or shrinking it in that sort of way. But we'll talk about that a little later. And then also the rotate tool, which you could grab and rotate your model around. Um, so those options are there. We'll talk about those tools a little bit more in depth. All right, let's get to building, folks. So we have a sphere. I'm going to quickly label this because double click it and call this the base of the snowman just so we can keep things in order. If you pop in another model here, okay, uh, notice that it puts it at zero, zero, zero again. So we can get it there. And uh, I'm going to grab the move tool and I'm just going to raise it up into position. I'm going to grab this little handlebar here and I'm going to shrink it down a little bit for that that base. Then I'm going to zoom out slightly, move this down, and I'm going to call this one the middle. Double click it, label it. Again, you want to make sure you label everything to keep it organized. Um, next thing we need is a head. Now the other thing we could do, instead of you know grabbing another primitive, we could copy and paste. So if I take the middle, copy it, Command C, Command V, we paste it in. Nothing happens. But what it did is it put uh, a copy of it in the exact same position, the exact same size. So we really can't see it. It's being covered up by the original one. But we see it here in the Objects Manager. Uh, it lay and labeled it middle point one. So if, since that's highlighted, if I grab it and lift it up, you'll see that we do have, in fact, have a clone of it. And we can shrink that one down a little bit. And we can call this one the head. All right. There's our snowman. It's coming together. Uh, let's make a nose, shall we? So primitive object. Cone would be a good nose. I'm going to pop this in. And... Uh, zoom out a little bit, raise this up so we can see it. One nice thing about using the Attributes Manager is you can change the orientation really quickly with some objects. So for example, right now it's oriented with the uh, plus Y, it means the, the vertical axis is um, facing upward. Uh, if I tried X, it would turn it to the side. If I did Z, it would change it to the back. But we want negative Z, so that's going to give us you know, the sort of similar orientation that we need. Uh, the other thing is is that it's too big for a carrot nose, so we're going to change the radius from 100, let's say down to 25. And the height is a little too long. We're going to make this, uh, I don't know, let's say 100. Maybe our radius needs to be a little smaller, 15. That's pretty good. And then all I need to do now is bring it up. Okay. And then you'll need to probably rotate here, rotate the model, and then grab the Z and bring it forward. And there we have our carrot nose. Pretty good. Okay, so zoom in a little bit. You can see uh, there we have our, our carrot nose. Next thing we'll need is a couple of eyes. Uh, I'm going to choose actually this platonic object. I like these guys. They're geometric sort of forms. And I'm going to grab the dodecahedron. Uh, change it to that one. And I'm also going to change the radius of this guy. Let's see, the carrot was 15. That's probably pretty good. I'll make this 20. And, uh, and then, again, bring this guy up. Rotate a bit. Bring it forward. Rotate again so I can see how I'm doing. Bring it over to the left. Okay, maybe a little big for the old eye there. So let's change this down to 15. Uh, and then now is a good chance to copy big. I got the eye where I want that one. If I want another one, I can just copy this paste it, drag it over to the other side, and uh, there we have our snowman. So looking pretty good so far. Okay, uh, if we render this out again, the render button right up here, render view is what you want. Uh, the snowman is floating in space, right? No stars either, just empty void space. So we want to give this guy a little bit of a environment to exist within. Uh, the next thing that I'll do, actually, before I go there, what I want to do is group this guy, all right? If I want to move him around, right now I'd have to move each one of these things and uh, separately. It would be a little bit of a pain. So now I, I have the snowman how I want, so I'm going to group it. So in the Objects Manager, click and drag over all these guys to highlight them. Go to Objects, 
group objects, and it's going to give you a null object right here. So if I click on that, double click it, I'm going to call this snowman. And if I open it up, you can see that all the objects are now children of that snowman null. So the, think of this as just like a folder, and all these guys are in it. Okay, so now if I select on the individual base, I can move that thing if I wanted to, or I can click on the snowman, which selects all these guys, and I can move this back and forth like that. All right, so that becomes really helpful when you're starting to, um, you know, build objects, uh, build models, and uh, move them around. Okay, so we have uh, snowman. Um, I'm going to add in a landscape right here. Go down, primitive object. Uh, it gives you this kind of flat plane. I'm going to lift it up so it buries in the snow a little bit there. I'm going to make this, uh, I don't know, 1600. Over here, the size 1600. And then maybe um, 150, maybe 200. That looks pretty good. Uh, and a little bit of a snow bank. I'm going to tilt this up. And there we have our, uh, maybe a little more here, 250. Okay, that's good. All right, so here's our snowman sitting in the snowbank. So the next thing we need, some color, some materials, maybe a sky to throw in here. So let's talk about that. Uh, snowman is going to need some snow. So down here is the materials palette. Go to create, new material, and let's see, double click this. So it opens up in a palette. Right now it's kind of an off-white, so we're going to change this over to white. Basically just clicked on this, opened up this palette. You can change the sliders, you can drag, you can click to select the color that you want. I'm going to give a little tiny bit of reflection, maybe just like 5%. Um, and in class I talked about displacement. So here we go, down at the bottom we have displacement. What I want with this is I want to create kind of a bumpy snow. So click this on, shows up here, go to texture, and click this little arrow, and I'm going to load in a noise channel. This is a preset kind of uh, uh, pattern that will, that will make a uh, bumpy sort of surface. Um, I am going to also choose sub-poly displacement, okay? <clears throat> and lastly, I'm going to click round geometry. All right, so those things are all set. Um, I also I'm going to, let's go back here, if I click on this thing, the little noise icon, I'm going to change the global scale to 300. What just happened? 300, there we go. And that's going to give me a little bit, you know, bigger lumps essentially. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put this on the model. So what you can do is, you can either click and drag to a specific piece of the model like this, and it'll turn it white, right? You can drag those things on there. The head's got a lot of components I might miss, so instead I could drag it over here and put it right on the word head, and it'll add it to that. And then, of course, onto the landscape. That needs to be white. And if I render this out, we have nice white, but we don't quite have the bumps yet. We have the bumps in the landscape, but not in the... Uh, snowman. So here's what we do. Got to go to base. We're going to make these editable, which I'll talk about a little bit later. But for now, if you highlight these three, click this little yellow button here, make it editable, and hit render. <clears throat> You'll see a lumpy snowman looking pretty good. Okay, so we got that. Let's make the coal eyes. This is pretty easy. I'm going to first label this material, double click the word, call it snow. All right, uh, snow with an E, snowy. Uh, there we go. <laughs> okay, so here's what I want to do. I want to create a similar material. I'm going to call it coal. Uh, and so what I can do with this is, is I want the bumps. I want everything like that. I want the reflection, but I don't want it to be white. I want it to be black. So if I copy this material, when it's all yellow, it's highlighted, copy it and paste it. We get a new one. The new one shows up to the left, okay? And uh, if I double click this, <clears throat> I can go to color, click on the color, and change it to maybe like a reddish, reddish black. That would be good. That's looking pretty good. 
Okay, so now I have my coal material, <clears throat> and here we go. I'm going to put it. I should have labeled these eyes, but I'll put this on the eyes. There we go. And uh, let's make these editable so that it gets bumpy. Get bumpy. I'll take a look at that. Do we get bumps? Let's see. Nice lumpy stones in there, coal stones. Okay, and finally the carrot. New material. Double click this guy. Let's make it orange. You can use the sliders here. Lots, lots of red, no blue, less green, gives you orange. Good. And here, let's do a bump channel. Um, I'll talk about this a lot more later too. Bump channel, what we want, go down to um, surface, checkerboard, click on the checkerboard. Let's do U frequency of zero and V frequency of two. Should be good. Gives us some lines there. Zero. Zero. Okay, good. Let's go back, click on back of the bump. Let's give it a little bit of blur, like, oh, I don't know, 20%. That should be good. And uh, a little less strength. 11%. Sure, why not? Okay. And then let's put this guy on the, on the cone, the carrot. And now we have. A orange nose. Okay, see so it put these little like stripes in it. I don't know, kind of carrot like. Carrot enough. We'll call it that. Carrot enough. Okay, last thing to finish this off is we need the sky. Easy one this time. Go up to this little button called it says the floor. It's a group of uh, environment objects. And go over to physical sky. Pop that guy in there. Uh, notice below in the attributes manager, it gives you time and date. You can change the time of day if you want to, 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock, all that sort of thing. And then, uh, you know, if I, so I'll render this out, you can see it's kind of like a, a wintry morning with that yellowy sun. The sun's a little bit ye too yellow for my taste, so I'm just going to simply change the month. <laughs> Pretty easy, right? Go to January. I prefer May. Okay. Springtime. Nice bright sun. Um, I prefer uh, one o'clock. All right, after lunch. Here we go. Let's check it out. Nice blue shadows. Nice snowman. All done. All right, your job is to add something to your snowman model. Okay, using primitive objects, anything you want, any combination. Practice with putting some primitives together uh, and creating some materials, okay, uh, to add to your snowman. What else would this figure need? Do on Tuesday. <laughs>